Good evening and welcome to the uh, service uh, tonight. Um, it's good that we're able to, to tune in and I hope uh, you are all well. Uh, I'm so much looking forward um, for the time in which we can uh, once again meet uh, together. Anyway, uh, for the meantime, we continue as we are. Uh, we're going to, to look at God's Word tonight in Ephesians chapter 2 again. And um, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your precious Word and for the truth that it contains. And uh, Lord, we do pray tonight that um, you would grant us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and that, Lord, you would enlighten the eyes of our hearts to see Jesus. And uh, what we see um, would just captivate us, would just bless us, would fill us with so much joy, so much hope. Um, help us to understand the grace of God. Let us see something fresh of your grace tonight. And that would feed our souls this week and for days to come. Bless each one then as we tune in tonight. Uh, Lord, forgive us for all our sins and may your hand of blessing be over us and our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read uh, Ephesians, 2, chap uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Um, Paul says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the prince of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we, are his, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. And we pray that God bless that word um, to us. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I, was, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. These are the words composed by uh, John Newton, a former uh, captain of a slave ship, after the Lord had wonderfully saved him. And of course, millions across the world have heard this hymn and millions have sang it. We ourselves have sang it many times, of course, uh, throughout our lives. And even non-Christians uh, sing this hymn as well. It's been recorded by countless artists from Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley to the three tenors to the Rascal Flats and Alan Jackson, just to name uh, a few and we've heard of grace. We've heard at least of the word grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We've heard it. We use the word grace. But do we, do we know what grace is? Do we really know what grace is? Do we understand it? And, and more than that, have we, have we experienced this amazing grace that John Newton speaks about, which the Bible speaks about. Well, tonight I'm going to work my way through verses 8 and 9, 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. These verses are our focus tonight. Um, so we're going to begin by the first heading, which is I've got here is um, saved by grace, saved by grace. You know, we've looked at this a number of times. Paul has said that we were dead <clears throat> in our sins at one time. Uh, we rejected God when we followed the world and when we followed Satan. Uh, we did whatever our sinful hearts wanted to do. And therefore, we were under the righteous anger and judgment of God because of those sins that we were committing. But the, to the tone changes uh, in verse 4 when Paul says, But God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ and raised us up and seated us in heavenly places. And then we come to verse 8, which says, For by grace you have been saved. And friends, this is Paul's summary. This is a summary of everything he's been saying so far. <clears throat> the word for is referring to what he's been saying. And now he says, for, for by grace you have been saved. What is grace? Someone has said that, let's put it like this, um, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's true. Grace, G-R-A-C-Y, God's riches at Christ, at C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. That's certainly true. Grace is God's free and undeserved mercy towards us. We deserve his anger, but instead we got his love. We deserve his condemnation. Instead, we receive his forgiveness. We deserve hell, but the Lord gives us heaven. And none of these things we deserve are earned. But you know, friends, as I was thinking about this, grace is not so amazing if you don't see how bad your sins were. And if you don't see what it is that God has saved you from and what he's taken you into. Grace is not so amazing if you don't realize who Jesus is and the lengths by which God went to save you. When, you see, when we fail to see the utter holiness, the utter majesty of God and the sheer sinfulness of ourselves, then grace is not that amazing. It's not that amazing if we fail to see these things. Do you know, one time Jesus was in the house of a Pharisee by the name Simon and a woman came into the house and she poured ointment all over Jesus. She wet his feet with her tears as she was crying. The drops fell onto Jesus' feet and she dried Jesus' feet with her hair and she put ointment all over him and put ointment on his feet, his whole body. Now Simon, the Pharisee, well, he was quite upset about this. He didn't say anything out loud, he just kept it in his heart. But he was upset about what this woman was doing and that Jesus wasn't doing anything about it. And he said to himself in his own heart something like this, well, if Jesus was a real prophet, then he would know what kind of woman this is. And he wouldn't let her near him. He would tell her to go. 
But Jesus knew what Simon was thinking because it was revealed to him by the Spirit. Jesus knew what he was thinking and so he responded to Simon and he told a story about two men who owed a money lender. Two men who owed a money lender. Now, one of the men owed a lot more than the other. His debt was, was far higher than the other man's uh, debt. However, the money lender decided to cancel both men's debts. He says, okay, you don't need to pay me back. Just call it quits. Forget it. That's it. And then Jesus asked Simon, which one do you think will love him, would love the money lender more? And Simon replies, well, I guess the one who was forgiven more, you know, the one who had the greater debt. And Jesus then went on to respond to Simon. Uh, you can find this in Luke chapter 7. And in verse 37, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, her sins, this woman, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. And then notice these words that he says here. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. Now the point is not that this woman's sins were, were, were greater or more than Simon's sins. Rather, this woman realized her sins. She knew how bad they were. She knew how bad the things were she did. She knew her state that she was in. And therefore, she knew the enormity of the grace that had been given to her. Those who don't see themselves as sinners or who don't see the hideousness of their sins don't understand grace. We don't have a high enough view of God and we don't have a low enough view of our sins. But those who see the grace of God in Jesus Christ, they love the Lord very much. And they see that we've been given a salvation that we could never earn and never ever deserve. We couldn't earn it, we couldn't deserve it. It is absolute grace. The mercy and the favor of God given to us undeservedly. So to appreciate grace, we have to realize not only that we have been, not only what we've been saved from, not only the length that God has gone to to save us, but also to realize what he's taken us into. And I hope that through these series of sermons on Ephesians, since we began them some time ago, because in, he, in Ephesians 1 and 2, Paul has just been expounding the blessings that are being given to you by grace in Jesus Christ. And we spent weeks going through this. Seeing the amazing grace of God given to us. Now secondly, through faith. Saved by faith. Saved by grace through faith is the second point. Paul wants to, to point out that this salvation by grace is through faith. Now notice that it, the salvation is through faith. In other words, it's not faith itself. You're not saved by faith in and of itself. I mean, I mean all kinds of people say, I've got faith. I believe. But when you discuss it a bit more with them, it comes down to, 
Well, it's not really faith. It's, it's just faith. That's just faith. It's something as, abstract. Well, faith in itself doesn't save. Rather, salvation comes through faith. That is faith in Jesus. As Paul told the Philippian jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say just believe. He said believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. If I said to you, here, take this 100 pound note. It's your birthday. This is my gift to you. Take it. Spend it on what you like. By faith, you would stretch out your hand and take the hundred pound note. Well, faith, friends, is the hand that stretches out to receive salvation from Jesus. It is faith in Jesus by which the grace of God saves us. God says, salvation is found in my son Jesus. Here's my son Jesus. And by faith, we, we go to turn to him. And we got to, to trust in him. That his death and resurrection is the only way to, to save us. And by faith, we submit our lives to Jesus. So, so friends, salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Thirdly, the gift of God. Paul adds to these words that they've been saved by grace through faith, and then he adds this, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. So salvation is by the grace of God, which we receive through faith in Jesus Christ, but Paul says, actually, this faith too was a precious gift from God. It's a gift. And this is not from you. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Saving faith is a gift from God. A God-given conviction that the promise of resurrection life, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, are all true. John 6 and verse 44, Jesus said there, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. John 3, verse 3. Jesus, speaking to Nicodemus, says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he goes on to say, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is is spirit. I mean, think of it. Paul has just said in verse 1 of chapter 2 that they were dead in our, our sins. We, before we came to Christ, were dead in our sins. We were spiritually dead towards God. Now, friends, dead things can't believe or respond, can they? Dead things can't believe or respond. It has to be brought to life. And this is what God did when he made us alive in Christ. But God, being rich in mercy, made us alive, as Paul says here. He quickened us by the work of the Holy Spirit so that we could respond in faith to Jesus Christ. 
Now, some people say that Paul is actually not referring to faith here, but he's referring to salvation. Let's read the verse again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it's a gift of God. Now, some say this is not referring to faith, but it's referring to salvation, being saved. But it doesn't matter. Because even if it is referring to salvation, that includes faith, does it not? Because salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And so you see, the Bible portrays faith and repentance as God's gift to his church, to his elect. In order to to emphasize that although we do repent and we do believe, yet God is the ultimate cause of that because he's the one who's made you alive to do that. We will to believe, but only after and because God provided us with the power, he made us alive in Christ. And so from beginning to end, from its inception to its consummation, salvation is entirely the work of God. It's a gift. A gift of God to his elect. God's work of making us alive, of regeneration, is required if we are to believe. Yet he calls us to faith through the preaching of the gospel. And we're told that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, Romans 10, 17. So you see, it's not by chance or by lack of the draw that some have come to save in faith. No, but, but by virtue of the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, you're being saved by grace, even your faith. And so that leads me to finally, no boasting. No boasting. Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We've been saying it already, salvation from start to finish is the work of God. Even though we repented and even though we believed that too was given to us when we were made alive. And the reason for this, Paul says, is that no one Absolutely no one can boast in their salvation. No one, no no Jew, no Gentile, can boast in their salvation. No one can say, well, actually, do you know, I actually contributed a little bit towards my salvation. I helped God out a bit here. I helped God, oh, it's a wee tiny bit, but I helped him. Nope. Nope. Salvation is undeserved and unmerited in any way, shape, or form. And for that reason, all glory, all glory, all of it goes to God. All of it goes to Him. And if I could just say this as well, it's not that God designed it this way that He would get the glory. It was the only way we could be saved. The perfect way was for God to give us free will. 
knowing that we would mess up with that, and then for himself to come and rescue us. And this is one of the reasons some people find it hard to accept the gospel. Because it requires us to humble ourselves. It empties, it empties us of all pride. Because we have to bow low before the Lord and say, Save me, Lord, a sinner. I can't save myself. I'm in dire straits and dire need of you to rescue me. I cannot save myself. And our pride struggles with that. We want to say, well, I'm not that bad, and I can get myself out of this, I can do something, but when it comes to salvation, God says, no, you can't. You can't do a thing for yourself. You've got to, it's my mercy is my grace, and by grace, you are saved through faith in Christ. I can help myself. No, we can't. The gospel of Jesus Christ leaves no room, absolutely no room, for human works, human pride in salvation whatsoever. There is absolutely nothing for us to boast about in and of ourselves. In fact, to boast about salvation would be to take away from God's glory. We're taking away something from Him, something He has done, entirely He has done, and we're taking credit for it if we boast in it. In fact, God will not allow that. Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. I give it to no other. And if we boast in our salvation, we're taking that glory to ourselves. Do you know, if we understand grace, and the more we understand it, it leads us not to boast in ourselves, but to boast in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 17, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord, says Paul. If you're going to boast, boast in Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, 14, But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. If I'm going to do any boasting, I'm going to boast in the Lord. To boast in the Lord, friends, is to brag about how great He is. To brag about what He's done. In the words of Jesus to the man he healed. Remember the man who had the, the legion of demons and Jesus set him free, drove out these demons from him. And the man was, was saying, I want to go with you, Jesus. And Jesus said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. In other words, go and, go and boast about Lord, the Lord. Go and boast about God. Tell people what God did. Magnify, exalt, glorify his name. Boast about the Lord, friends. Boast about what he's done for us. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify his name at every opportunity that we are given. And so here's a little question for you and for me. When was the last time we boasted in God? Do you know, I was thinking about this. Often we hear about great churches. Oh, that's a wonderful church. Or we hear about great ministries. You know, they're doing a real great work there. That's just wonderful. Or pre about certain preachers. You know, you hear people boasting about certain preachers and how, how, how gifted they are and how, how, how excellent their sermon was and so on. But in our conversations... How often do, do you and I boast in the Lord? 
How often do we hear people bragging about Jesus? Not just in our Sunday services, but out of our Sunday services, in our everyday context. How often do we hear people bragging about Jesus? Have we nothing to boast about in the Lord? Have we really nothing to boast about? We have everything to boast about in Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it's the gift of God, not the result of work so that no one may boast. And you know, sometimes, sometimes that boasting might actually be just speech, leave us speechless in utter amazement. After contemplating these verses this week, Realizing how good the Lord has been to me and knowing I don't deserve any of it, I kept saying over and over to myself when I thought of grace, wonderful, 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 I kept saying to myself, wonderful grace. No wonder John Newton wrote these words. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your wonderful grace. Lord, may we never cease to boast about you. May our tongues never be silent in proclaiming your praise, your wonders. Lord, let us magnify you day by day in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad times. When we feel low or when we feel happy, let us boast in the grace of our God, the wonder of our God in saving us by grace through faith in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.